healing sinners in the Bible. Uh, he find him healing people didn't have very much faith, but he worked with them of what they did have. Now gifts cannot be bought. You can't go on a forty-day fast and twist God's arm and get one. Now fasting's good. We should all do that and pray. But these are gifts that God gives freely when you ask, desire, for the right reason. For the right reason, not for self-glorification, but for church glorification. All right. Now, how to develop our spiritual ministry? The best way to develop our spiritual ministry is work with, pray with, watch, listen to those who have spiritual gifts. Work with them. Pray with them. Go listen at them preach. Watch them in operation. Watch some dear soul that's one of the helpers in the church. Watch this wonderful ministry working. When the storm is raging and things are not just the way they should, she's helping. It's like they wrap that cable around the ship to hold it together. Watch this person. Watch these people that's supposed to be guides in the church directing people watch them and if they're in the spirit walking in the spirit you can learn as you watch them so I have found it a great blessing to work with them to pray with them to watch them and to listen to them and then if you've got a gift that's just beginning like a tiny baby that's just been conceived if that is in there, God has placed it there. It begins to move and to work as you pray and work with spiritual men and women who have and exercise spiritual gifts. Notice how Elisha watched Elijah operate his gifts. For 14 years after he killed all of his cows, took off after the prophet Elijah. He didn't do a thing in the world. There's not one miracle mentioned that Elisha performed. All he did was to cook and wash Elijah's clothes and pour water on his hand. Whenever he needed to wash his hand, he was always there to pour water on his hand. He was a very faithful servant watching Elijah. He was there when it happened. He felt the spirit of the thing as this prophet was doing it. And when he finally rode away, he dropped that mantle. And this young prophet that had been with Elijah 14 years now grabs a mantle. And he runs to the river Jordan. And he rears back and he slams it down on the water and he shouts, Where is the God of Elijah? And the waters roll back. And from that day, he performed more miracles than Elijah ever performed. But notice, for 14 years, he just followed. He faithfully watched prayed and waited for his time. The disciples watched Jesus demonstrate the mighty gifts. And even when the Pharisees, the Pharisees, they knew when they saw that man healed that had never walked in his life, they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. 
You know where they got that kind of faith to shout silver and gold, have we none? But such as we have, we give unto you, rise up and walk. They got it watching Jesus, praying with Jesus, talking to Jesus, listening to Jesus teach. Praise the Lord. All right, minister gifts and layman gifts are used differently, but all are used for the self-same purpose, but they're used different. See, I might stand here in the pulpit, and I might have a healing campaign, but some lay member may have a gift of healing, and it'll only work when they're somewhere in the highways and hedges, in a sick room, in a hospital, or somewhere like that. And it might work perfectly, just as good as it worked in the minister in the pulpit, just as good as it worked through Brother Clark or Brother Buster or some of these other fellas. But put you up before a camp meeting, you wouldn't get nothing done. Because, you see, the minister, minister is another calling. See, you're not a preacher, you're just a helper with a gift of healing or whatever it might be to be a blessing out there. I heard last year at the men's meeting they had a man testifying it was just heifers in the church. You know, tithe, payers, and whatever, you know, they just help. Well, this big old fellow was a fisherman. He made his living fishing and peddling fish. And he gave his testimony in the men's meeting, and he said that he went to carry the old lady some fish. He said, I'm sick. I'm not able to get up. I don't need any today. He said he started to leave. And the Lord said, you go in there and pray for her. So he fought it for a while. He finally stuck his head in the door and said, would you mind if I prayed for you? She said, no, I'd be glad for you to pray for me. He laid hands on her and God healed her. It was a miracle of divine healing through a fisherman. We just got to learn our place, you know. Every man has his place like every member of the body. The little finger can't take the place of the thumb, but it's very, very important in its place. All right, all gifts should be operated with love. We may have faith that we can move mountains, and if we have not love, it won't profit us or the people anything. It's not worth a dime to get somebody healed if you don't get them filled with the Holy Ghost. Finish the job. Lead them to the Lord. Now, I tried this one, a couple of these out on you. You heard these. I was just seeing if it was going to work. They worked just a little bit on the church at home. They worked good somewhere else. the mother of Jesus never worked a miracle but she gave the world it's only miracle miracle worker she gave the world now the thought here is let's work with what we have Mary would have loved to give her son to the world from a castle but she couldn't we wouldn't have had him until now if she'd have waited until she owned the big, beautiful castle to have her son in. So since she couldn't give him, give him to us from a castle, she gave him to the world from a manger. So since you might not be out in yonder in the big, wild, blue yonder, you can 
Let the world know about Jesus from where you are. From where you are. It may be a cow stall. It may be the manger. Wherever it is, we need to learn if we're going to operate the gifts that God gave us. Mary never performed a miracle, but she gave the world the miracle worker. John the Baptist never performed a miracle. Not one miracle that we read that he ever performed. Yet he was the greatest prophet, the Bible said, ever born to woman. Yet he never performed a miracle. But I'll tell you what he did do. He introduced the miracle worker to the world. Can you hear him one day as he's preaching his heart out? Lo and behold, the one he'd been preaching about, he saw him. Saw him standing in the crowd. And he turned and he pointed. And he said to the fo his followers, Look, behold, there he is, the Lamb of God, that taketh away the sins of the world. He must increase, and I must decrease. That's a secret. He must increase if we receive gifts. And we must decrease. Be so wonderful when we preach the cross that we could be so perfectly hid behind it nobody could see us, only the cross. And here we see a beautiful picture here. John saying... My menace is decreasing. My crowd is decreasing. His is increasing. And his crowd is increasing until he'll fill the whole earth with his glory. That's a real ministry. But now I have watched some of these big wheels. Jesus decreased in their ministry. And they increased. Until they owned mansions. And they own millions and millions of dollars. They increased and Jesus decreased. But if you've read a lot in the papers, you've found out. When you do that, you fall. Let that ever be an example, a sermon you never forget. When he starts decreasing, in your life and you begin to increase you're headed for a fall and a great one now to be effective then we must decrease the world must see jesus not us now i also mentioned the little woman at the well she had had five husbands Jesus told her, said, the one you're living with now is not your husband. And you've had five. Said, if you'd ask of me that I'd give you living waters, you'd never thirst. She asked. She left her water pail. And she went back to Samaria. Now, it had, hadn't been but a few days that James and John was in Samaria, trying to get a place, a motel, for Jesus to stay all night. Well, the Jews and the Samaritans didn't get along. So I can hear James and John sort of getting smart and letting them know uh, we want this and we want it right and this and that. And they, finally they just told them to get out of town said, we're not interested in your money. Keep your money and go on. They went back to Jesus just as mad as an old wet hen and they said, Lord, if you'll just permit it, we'll call far down now and burn all that town up. There won't be nothing left but cinders. He said, you don't know what spirits you got. But right then the Lord said, I'm going to teach them boys something. They couldn't even get a place to be to stay all night. And here is an old woman that's lived a dog's life. And I've saved her here in the last few minutes, converted her. And she's going to go back to town. And the whole town's coming out to see me. And sure enough, when she went down that street trotting, them old women out there churning, you know how they used to sit on the front in them days churning that milk, you know, and, 
and telling little John or Sarah Ronsi about the cornbread, you know, and turnips, you know, and all of that. And they said, look, 